Hi, everyone, and welcome to episode 75 of Midnight Poppy Land. And we have a large cast and crew today. We have Vida or Vida, and I know I've been saying this a million times, and I should know it by now. Vida? Vida. Yeah, okay, great. <laughs> and Penny, and Darla, and Saucy Tuggles. Hello. Hi. Hey, everyone. Hi, everybody. Back again. <laughs> so, so excited to have everybody. It's going to be awesome. Um, we start out with a little bit of a recap of what happened last time where Poppy asked Tora a pretty serious question. And, you know, you're not wrong, but that superficial stuff is part of who we are, you know? Or, and this is she leans in, are you worried that I'll stop talking to you when I learn more about you? And now we get into the episode. So we open up with Tora lying down on the dock. And I have to say, I love his hair. Little messed around over there. I know. <laughs> And probably a little scattered like his mind right now with that question yes yeah, so he's contemplative he's looking up and he does answer honestly he says maybe which is great that he's able to actually tell the truth instead of joking or deflecting in some manner yeah yeah he's definitely in serious mode and you know poppy sees that as kind of her in she's like so, so if I promise, will, will you tell me more about yourself if I promise that I won't? She looks so earnest. And I know. Sincere. I know. She really just wants to know more about him. Goodness. Oh, bless her. And he says, I, I know I can be judgy and I definitely misjudged you before, but I also know you well enough to see who you are now, not who you were in the past. He just looks at her a little bit more blank stare right and we talked about Tora's famous blank stare where you don't mm -hmm. know what he's thinking and pop that sets poppy off into her spiral basically she right thinks, he's zoning out again and he, she has this worried look on her face and she flashes back to a very adorable cute looking poppy and obviously it's jewelry talking to her why are you always prying into what i do and i'm not with you don't you yeah. trust I can't keep reassuring you on everything I do. It's exhausting, babe. Give me a break. And poor Poppy, we see her. She looks so cute with those little pigtails and she just looks devastated. And the next picture, she's just crying. Oh. Yeah, so I have a crap ton to say about this scene. So bear with me, guys. Um, before we even get to that piece where, you know, it, one of the things that struck me about this interaction before we get to the flashback of Poppy and Jewelry is that both of them are dealing with their anxiety with this question in very different ways. Tora is staying silent because he's probably squirming on the inside is my guess. And Poppy, like when she's going through all of her dialogue, like about being judgy and that she's going to not try to judge him for who he is, like she's saying this all very rapid fire. Like at least that's how I imagine it in that you know, sh her anxiety is kind of like, well, let me say things that'll reassure you. And I'm, I'm anxious about it. So I'm just going to like rapid fire through it. And then when he doesn't respond and I'll admit, if a guy looked at me, like Tora looked at her, I'd be like, oh crap, I said the wrong thing. Cause he's just still quiet. Um, cause I think he's like, I don't even know where to go with this. I don't know where to start with this. How, how can I be honest with her? And she takes it because of her historical background with jewelry as like, crap, I went too deep, too fast. I asked, I, I pushed a barrier or pushed a boundary. Yeah, jewelry didn't want any accountability mm -hmm. to Poppy. So anytime she asked for anything from him, he just pushed her away. Right, right. And blamed it on her. Like there was something wrong with her because, you know, oh, you want to know more about me or know what's going on in my life when that's really just very natural. When you're involved with someone, you want to know more about them. You want to know what their day was like and what they were doing. Um, I'm sure she brought those questions up very, you know, very casually and he just got very defensive. The other thing I wanted just to bring up too so I, I guess more from going more inside of Tora's head, I thought it was really interesting that when Poppy's speaking, there's the emphasis on now. 
um, but mm -hmm. I know you well enough to see you for who you are now, not who you were in the past. And then if you scroll down to the blank stare, I feel like he almost looks melancholic at this point because we know that Tora tries his best to be a good person, but I'm wondering how he views himself, you know, like yeah. he's setting up those boundaries uh, with Vincent and with the gang and that kind of thing. But mm -hmm. it's likely that he doesn't even see that big of a distinction between who he was in the past or even just sees himself with still some darkness inside him. Yeah. And he is hesitant to share that with Poppy. Yeah. I don't know if he thinks she can really handle it because I remember when I was writing my analysis, it's almost like he's asked, like he wants to call her bluff. Like, are you sure you can really handle what I have to tell you? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's sad. Yeah. I think good word. Made this little conversation interesting to me is um, her body language coming into it was so um, snuggly. You know, mm -hmm. on her tummy, feet up, just kind of down, you know, with the to wrap his arm around her. I was waiting. Yeah, for I was waiting for that too. I'm like, oh, oh come on, dude. He's right there. But whereas he's coming from too, it's like he put on this whole disguise to even come out to the burbs, you know, mm -hmm. to be perceived in a certain way and put on this kind of mask in mm -hmm. a sense. And so his glasses are off now, the jacket is off now. Um, he's with her he doesn't need that but it it's still you know he's coming from doing that all day long and now this question of you know tell me who you really are yeah yeah that was kind of the context was interesting to me mm -hmm. yeah uh, and going back to the flashbacks we see mm -hmm. that you know the first flashback we see it's a black silhouette which obviously this is your territory saucy but you know it obviously lends to the depressing memory but then the next one it is kind of like looks like a candle flame but or like the eye you know when it's closing so it mm -hmm. feels like closing in on her and her memories are suffocating her and making her consciousness her present mm -hmm. suffocate her now so we're like where her brain is shutting off and she tells herself no stay where you are poppy don't withdraw but yeah it looks like she is withdrawing she gets up you know she was previously like you said snuggled against him she gets sits up she has sweat she looks quite anxious she's biting her lip and she thinks don't withdraw and then the image is becoming even dimmer and the whole thing is closing even more for her and then she just like snaps and she's like oh okay then and we don't even see her in the frame anymore that's how much right. she's right this scene this whole flashback really broke my heart because this just shows you how hard she has been trying this whole time. And I think this is why I get so up in arms in defending Poppy and, and her interactions with Tora and how she's hesitant and everybody's just like, whatever, just go for it. And I'm like, hold the damn phone because like, let's not forget that she was with this asshole for six years and he did innumerable abusive things to her, at least emotionally. We know that much. And, you know, this has built a lifetime of negative scripts that she sees the world through now. So when someone is silent, when someone is not responding to her questions, she assumes that it's because she's done something wrong rather than that person may just not be ready to share. So, you know, she may not see the whole picture and, you know, at the same time, like she notices herself kind of closing off and retreating and she's still trying to fight it because she knows that the, I think she's, she's grasping what's happening to her. And she knows intellectually that Tora doesn't feel like she prized too much, but she still gets those little trigger points every now and again. And it's, it's hard to fight against, um, because it's, it's the very thing that, you know, we see the world through when, when things like that have affected us over time, it's, it's hard to break. And, you know, she's, she's actually in this moment, she's using jewelry's gaslighting to discount her own reality right now. She's discounting her, her natural curiosity about him. And it just, it broke my heart. And then just watching, you know, that younger Poppy, like getting closed off and she just like even her hesitant body language like oh shit I fucked up and like 
turning away from him and trying to make light of it deflect like she usually does. Um, it's just, oh, that like stabbed me in the soul. Mm-hmm. <sighs> Yeah, I think your point about how it takes a lifetime or it takes a long time to unlearn those negative scripts is yeah. We, we recognize much very clearly with Torah his abuse because it's it's jarring and it's not commonplace. Right. But Abby's abuse is whether you know even if it was just emotional, it also leaves a very 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 strong mark and yeah. it's subtler sure, sure, but sometimes because it's so subtle and you don't it's not so harsh and so obviously bad. Mm-hmm sometimes even harder to to recognize it that oh this was abusive this is right yeah and it makes her fill in the gaps you know she's sitting there thinking like why is he being quiet well it's obviously because i did something wrong or i pushed too too fast too soon um but i mean we know that that's not the case because we know torah more we see more of his internal experience but we uh, poppy doesn't know that yeah, I mean, and also in, the, in in a way, right, we talked about this earlier this morning in the Let's Play podcast, but in a way it could be that this particular aspect of their relationship could be where they're not concordant, right? Because she has a need to feel reassured and spoken to, and Tora has a very hard time opening up and, and sharing. So yeah. it could be, be an issue that they'll have a lot of friction. Mm-hmm. So, but I love what Tora does here. I think he sensed her discomfort because he's pretty good at doing that. He's done this before where he senses like, oh, she's kind of spiraling because I mean, that's exactly what she's doing. And he grabs her and he says, no, hey, it's it's kind of his own way of like, stay with me, hang in there, like, give me a minute. Yeah. yeah. It's also even before that, like, all right, go ahead. Right, well, I think you're muted, Saucy. Saucy, you're muted. Oh, it's also uh-huh. like okay. <laughs> Sorry, Vita. I forgot what I was gonna say. <laughs> <laughs> okay. okay. Well, we'll come back to it. Um, I like how Lily uses that black box, right? First, mm-hmm. it appears from the frame, and then there's a black box. So that's like the showing, like the utter breakdown. You know, I think it's yeah. Just, yeah, this is like, I feel like anytime I do anything visual analysis, I feel like I'm impeding on Saucy's territory. But yeah, it's such a beautiful way to show us emotionally what is happening in her. Yeah, and she's like, oh, some other time, right? Which is again, like, oh, she must have done that with jewelry so often where he's like, oh, you know, blah, 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 blah. And she's like, oh, it's okay. Don't worry, don't worry. Oh. But yeah, so, and then he, then he, I like it. I think you're right. I think he grabs her because he senses her discomfort. Like she's completely turned away from him at this point. She turned her back mm-hmm. to him. And, but he does lighten the mood. He's like, you might need it. Might need you to bribe me first, you know? And he has that smirk on his face. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I feel that's... like they're just, they're, they're learning how to communicate with each other. You know, they're learning like ticks, like silence for Torah means something very different than a deal with jewelry. Like he's not blowing her off. He's just stuck mm-hmm. in his thoughts. Yeah. I think Torah also is a little, like we talked about love language. I think for him, the way he expresses his feelings is with physical affection. You know, he might not be able to articulate his feelings verbally yet so well, but that's his way of reaching out, touch, kisses, holding, you know? Mm-hmm. <laughs> And it also felt like a grounding moment for, for Poppy. So if we go back to, I think it was episode 62 or 63, where they're in the alleyway and Poppy is reaching up and touching him and kissing him to kind of bring him back from the brink. He's kind of doing that here. Mm -hmm. Like, Hey, 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 stay with me here. Don't, don't leave. Don't close down on me. So, I mean, that's, that's kind of how I read it. And of course, you know, he goes into his usual pervy mode because <laughs> that's, that's what he knows how to do. Like, look at his face. I mean, look at him. He's just like, hmm, how can I get a kiss out of this? Like that. Yeah. <laughs> that, oh my God. That, the lust in his eyes. Mm. <laughs> Funny dude. Uh, so, giant Darlene. Worm. <laughs> yes. What this, this panel where we're just looking at Torah, what does that say to you? I want to know your thoughts. This is, this is what it says to me. 
<laughs> just kidding. No, yes. I, um. Oh my God! So, so sexy. Um. Wow. It. You know, if, if I was sitting on. Sorry, my tits coming out. If my if I That's was if I was sitting on the pier, I mean this this is him right now. I I would throw him down, okay, <laughs> and and just just do do what I gotta do because those eyes it says it all, and mm -hmm. you know you want it, you got it, sort of thing. So <laughs> you know, a double dog dare me. you to tackle me. <laughs> Exactly. <laughs> so exactly. why don't you go ahead and describe the next couple of panels then? This is your forte. <laughs> oh, okay. Okay, so here we see, so the next panel we see um Torah staring at Poppy, who's like, hmm, right? <laughs> and Total clearly, sex size. <laughs> clearly her tits are out, so I know what he's looking at because I'm looking at that and so you know tits are out I'm staring and then here she comes so Poppy's being this initiator like how I want her to be because that, that you that's how you got to be in life just initiate and then you know she's getting all red and shit because she's embarrassed which you know I would be the same way but fuck it YOLO right so she's yes. she's kissing him Oh, with her foot up in the air, all cute, you know, like, oh, I'm romantic. <laughs> the next panel. So you see her, uh, you know, just kissed him and she's still red in the face. So she's blushing all like, ooh, I'm looking sexy with my eyes. And then, yeah, so then ooh. we see her sitting on the pier on the edge uh she is so embarrassed and then tor is like your face and bobby's like okay cigarette breaks over now spill the so kiss initiators embarrassment so poppy's totally embarrassed which you know i i feel her on that because okay little side note here is um i initiated my first kiss with my boyfriend so I completely understand where she's coming from and it was actually a dare so it's like oh wow you know, yeah you just <laughs> kiss them and you know oh you throw them off a little bit get them excited and then you mm -hmm. you know pull back so I know exactly how she's feeling um and the fact that um Taurus pointing out that she's embarrassed you know that doesn't help <laughs> so mm -hmm. yeah oh I know it's like well why don't you just tell me the sky is blue of course my face is red Jesus <laughs> but but she made so much progress I'm so proud of our girl the first time the first she did time, she threw him down the stairs <laughs> that's <laughs> true she could have thrown <laughs> his ass progress. over the pier so <laughs> <laughs> all she did was scoot away yeah well no, but I'm I have to say like this face this Oh my I god! Thought I was like, I thought I was reading a Patreon update. I'll be honest. Right. Seriously, <laughs> like a Secret Garden episode. <laughs> Those are some love drunk eyes. Like, yeah, ten out of ten. Like, Ooh, I'm surprised crazy. she didn't jump his ass right there. <laughs> like, I know, right? Oh. Like, why didn't she just tear off that belt buckle? <laughs> Let, it's a completely it unnecessary out. exactly completely unnecessary accessory get rid of it Tora. <laughs> yeah so. i mean homegirl's not even wearing a bra all right he don't need yeah. to wear a belt <laughs> exactly why i don't even think he wears boxers at the fact so nope. just open that shit and it's right there dingle dangle <laughs> yes but do you guys think that like for a second he didn't like think she would call him on his bluff about the kiss because like he has that little like mini blush as she's going in for the kill like oh oh okay we're doing this <laughs> no I think he just like saucy poppy like he, he oh like, yeah Mr. has like a little little bite to her <laughs> I think he it's like he's just so turned on when she takes initiative yeah Aww. oh my god and I love her little foot kicked up and like she's just like 
bitch, I'm trying to like snuggle you. Like she put her arm <laughs> around his waist, like get closer, damn it. <laughs> <laughs> oh Adorable. my God. The scene, I died a million times over. <laughs> they're so comfortable with each other like they just look at every kiss is just in a more familiar I think position you know this is yeah. just really yeah, couple already and it and just really like soothes your soul after this serious shit that we just had to go through you know like he's like now hang on like don't worry about this I'm still into you and let me prove to you how yeah I loved that it was great I mean, reassurance Mm -hmm. I think I think that meant more to Poppy though the fact that he 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 kept his word and then mm -hmm. did end up opening up uh to yeah Becky what do you think yeah I thought it was super cute too like how he just didn't even know how to start the conversation he's like what do you even want to know about me? <laughs> mm -hmm. You can totally tell he's never had the one of those like heart to heart talks um, in the middle of the night where you just like get to know someone really, really well. Um, and I thought it was super cute where they ended up just bonding over the fact that in terms of family life, they are pretty similar. Mm -hmm. They're both technically orphans. Yeah. I was so excited to hear what he was going to say and when you know she's like oh tell me anything you want doesn't have to be mafia related you know he looks around and he starts off with I'm an orphan which I thought was you know when when someone if that's the first thing he chose to say about himself I think mm -hmm. that it shows that it's first to mind to him you know it's mm -hmm. something that he thinks about that is very important about him that affected his life what do you think about the fact that he started off with that I think it speaks to there's very little in his life that he can safely tell her yeah. in like full detail so like this is the one part of his life that yeah. belongs to him and him alone and that he can share with her that's not like total surface level shit because he just got done telling her not too long ago like we're more than just the superficial bullshit um and so i don't think he wanted to be like oh my favorite dinosaur is a t-rex kind of thing mm -hmm. Not that that isn't important, that is very important details, but I think, you know, he, he, I think he's trying to find common ground with her because he knows about her dad. Um, I, and I think he knows a little bit about her mom, but like just, just very cursory. But I think this is the one thing where they can kind of like bridge the gap in their relationship. Also, the one thing that doesn't make him a bad person. <laughs> yeah, true, true. I think part of it too, it's like you were saying, um, it, do you like Pat or Patricia? Oh, I go by Patty. Patty. Yeah, it's like Patty was saying in terms of like what was safe for him to start with. I think it's kind of like that um, he's working, he'll likely work his way up to some of the harder stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, that'll be harder for him to talk about. Right. So and and something that's like relatively safe, but still very personal and very mm -hmm. uh, at the core of his identity. Yeah. And let's be real. That's, that's safe and that's healthy. Mm -hmm. You know, you don't tell somebody on a first date, like, Hey, I'm a hitman in the mob. <laughs> like it just doesn't come up in casual conversation. You know, that's something that you share much later on down the road. Um, now, now part of me is like, because, you know, of course, like he goes on to say, like my pa died when I was what, four or five, they sent me to an adoption center because my mom couldn't take care of me for shit. Like the first thing Poppy thinks to herself was he wasn't kidding when he said he doesn't talk about superficial stuff. Cause that's, that's kind of a bomb to drop on somebody emotionally. Like, Oh shit. Okay. We're really going to go there. Um, and I hope you tin foilers are all taking notes because like the first thing that I noticed when he started talking about his parents, I'm like, okay, we know for sure dad's dead. And we know that too, he's, he was with them long enough to remember who they are hmm. and know yeah, at least a little, a little bit about bit. them. Um, but we don't know really whether or not mom is actually dead. He's only heard that she died a couple of years ago. So I'm not Aha. buying that as confirmation. Darla, go. What's your? Go what's for your... it. Okay. Well, I I never look 
too deep into stuff, but the fact that Patty just said that, I'm like, ooh, what if she's <laughs> not dead? And then, mm-hmm. you know, what if what if something happens? And what if we see her? Um, but I don't know. I, I I don't know if that would happen, but, um, mm-hmm. you know, I didn't think about that. It would be a beautiful parallel because, I mean, as far as we know, we also know that Poppy's mom is missing, right? We assume she's alive. We don't really know. Um, So, like, both moms are kind of MIA and unaccounted for. So we really don't know. Um, And that could be a plot twist later on. I don't know. I I could see that happening. We also have to start speculating, do we know who they are and are they related to the characters we already know? Right. right. Who are their parents? Are they related to Quincy, to Poppy, maybe to Goody, <laughs> maybe to, to Sharsh? Like, let's just throw them all in there. Oh my God. <laughs> I, I can't, I cannot deal with that. Like, I don't think outside of the one picture we've seen of Poppy's mom, I don't think we've seen any of them. I don't think we've met any of them or really? anyone they're related to. You I don't, don't think, think so. You don't think Mrs. Haru is Poppy's mom? <laughs> I mean, that is Poppy's mom. I mean, unless she like went into an age accelerating machine. I don't know if such a thing exists, but she's kind of old, like aged, what, <laughs> 50 don't be years? Tor- Poppy's dad was very open minded. He saw the <laughs> that they were. <laughs> well, Those no, I'm saying because like, her. yeah, well, because mom left when she was about six, which she, is what she says later on. And Poppy's 21, so she's only been gone 15 years. Like, what the hell was she up to that aged her that? <laughs> <laughs> she had a miracle baby in her late years. Maybe, maybe. <laughs> was from her childhood, you know, from her youth. <laughs> oh my God. Uh, she's keeping an eye on her, okay? What better way than to rent her an apartment than give uh, her cookies? She exactly. <laughs> and she made Poppy cookies, you know? Mm-hmm. She so was clearly mom life. <laughs> She's a mafia lady who knows Naren is unsafe. Mm-hmm. Oh my gosh. Everyone's in the mob. Everyone is Poppy's mom. <laughs> there we go. If you included. I know. Apparently, I had a child I was not aware of. <laughs> also two dimensional. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even know. Sorry, guys. That's an inside joke. <laughs> Saucy, do you have any uh, any theory, tinfoil theories around here? No. <laughs> okay. That was succinct. <laughs> I know. She's like, I'm not touching that with a 10-foot pole. Not <laughs> happening. <laughs> oh, my gosh. But I, I love that we get this background on Torah because I think that's something that a lot of us have speculated for a long time. I still don't think it answers all of the questions that we have and it won't I think it's probably going to be like the end of this season or like towards the next season um where we find out more about that but that's just me completely speculating and talking out my ass I have no idea but uh uh, I, I love that they're like getting to this part here and you know of course Poppy understandably is like oh my god I'm so sorry like holy shit like that's a bomb to drop right but she's noticing like he's very like standoffish about it like kind of like she says nonchalant and i think there's a reason for this um my kind of theory on why he's like very stoic about it is that you know when when you're someone who's experienced multiple levels of intense trauma and lives in the world that he does, he cannot afford to fall apart when he gets triggered by something, when something bad happens to him, because that will, you know, that has the potential to make him vulnerable and, and he could get killed, right? And so part of protecting, like part of what happens when someone experiences this is that they can do one of two things. And sometimes it's a little bit of both, but they can either go into total detachment, which is what I think Tora is doing here, you know, he's, he's doing this as a survival tactic to kind of mentally and emotionally get through what he has to deal with. He's an emotion stuffer and ignorer. And like, if he lets any of it out, he probably feels like he'll lose his mind because that's, that's something that 
often comes up with my clients when I'm talking to them about their trauma is that they'll be very matter of fact with about it. And I'll be like, I'm going to stop you there. And here's why, because the lack of emotional reaction you're having to this is actually a symptom of your traumatic reaction that you're, you're not connecting with the emotion that it has to do with that, but he does that because he has to. Right. Um, and it, it's not a healthy way to cope, but it's what he has to do because of the world that he's in. Um, and I hope what I'm hoping for is that when he's with Poppy, that he starts to kind of come out of that shell and start to connect with his emotions, like, um, ease up some of his, his, um, he's very wound up tight and he keeps everything contained. He's been contained almost this entire time, but she kind of throws him for a loop. So I'm hoping that she continues to do that and helps him feel. Yes, Stassi. I have an alternate theory. Mm -hmm. So if you grow up, you're sleeping on the floors, mm -hmm. you hide your stuff in the attic, because I'm going to tear it all up. And then so you, you just don't get it. You don't know how people talk or what they talk about or what you're supposed to be reacting to. You're with all the kids and they're like, oh, what's the first thing you remember? And like, mm -hmm. my first thing I remember is eating cookies with my grandma. First thing I remember, I was out the swing in the park. And then you're like, oh, the first thing I remember is trying to kill myself with a kitchen knife. And then they all stop and look at you and you're like, oh, was I not supposed to say that? Fuck. Mm -hmm. you know, that's where yeah. It's not, a, it, there's not only layers of like, oh, I'm high. You know, I can't say it. You don't know what the hell you're supposed to say. So you just mm -hmm. say what you know, and then everybody looks at you and you're like, fuck, I think I shouldn't talk. Yeah. Like That's this is, like. this is the normal, this is normalcy for me in my world. It is sleeping on the floor is freaking comforting mm -hmm. because that's, that's, that's what you do. Yeah. The beds are weird. They're high off the ground and fluffy and it's annoying. Mm -hmm. Seriously. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, there's more than one way to experience um, this. I'll, I, you know, I'll give you that, but that was just my interpretation of it and what I've seen. Enough. Yeah. So. I didn't mean to go off. Yeah, I guess it, I, when I first read it, I actually had a similar thought process to you, Patty, uh, where he was showing attachment. Um, just like it, it, there's a different levels of, it, of atta like attachment disorder. It's like when you do face trauma, like you were mentioning. And yeah, I, I guess I, I read it like you did, but mm -hmm. um, it's really interesting just to hear the flip side too, like Saucy as well. Because uh, it wasn't something that I had considered before. And I'm yeah. wondering if it isn't like a combination of the two where he just doesn't know what norm like normal is. Mm -hmm. um, and he just, he wants to be honest with Poppy, but he probably doesn't know how to be emotionally honest with her and probably not even with mm -hmm. himself. Yeah, because like, let's, let's think back to, you know, kind of what you were talking about, Saucy, when, when he was in the alleyway with her in that little alcove, like one of the things he said was we call their days numbered. And like, he doesn't think anything of saying that, right? Like, that's just a reality. Like we call them the numbered, right? And then she has this reaction and he's like, oh, well, that was great. You, you dumb fuck. Like, why did you say that? Because he didn't, he didn't notice that it was something that was shocking until he saw her reaction. Right. So like you said, like, you don't, yeah know until the reaction happens from someone outside i mean my read and i know my, my read is different but i mean everybody mm -hmm. has different eyes but my read is that torah is the most emotionally honest character in the entire story i agree like everything he is out of so life. honest Oh yeah, I don't want to say that he's being dishonest by holding that in. Like that's not what I meant at all. I think, you know, it's just they both contain in their own ways. And I don't I, I personally don't believe that containing is dishonesty, but that's just my take on it. Yeah, I guess oh, we have. Clarify, too. It was more like you have people that are more like cerebral and other people that are just emotional. Like some people just have to think through a problem and then mm -hmm. they react emotionally. And then other people have the emotional response first and then they think mm -hmm. through the problem. I guess like the way I see Torah is just that more analytical person. 
Yeah. Uh, so I, I agree with you in terms of his emotional honesty, but he's not an emotional, he doesn't react emotionally to a lot of situations. Like mm-hmm. the most we've seen, like at least the most we've seen him so far in the story, it's been out of anger or fear. Um, at least the very acute, hyper, um, big emotions that we've gotten from him. I don't think we've gotten much else though in terms of um, sadness. Per- oh, actually, we did get some sadness when he was a when he was a teenager. Yeah, the emotion yeah. that we've seen that's strong is the incredibly clear drive and need to connect with Poppy. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, in every way, sexually as well as everything. Mm-hmm. I think for a person that struggles with opening up, um, especially with like how Poppy's just like, just tell me anything about yourself. Like, just tell me anything. Mm-hmm. Um, I think the quintessential thing of that people always want to talk about to like give themselves out is childhood stuff and so I think like the main thing that he wanted to say was him being an orphan was like you know is a main identifier of who he is as a person mm-hmm. um like I think like when you when you talk about childhood traumas or things that have happened in your past like it really explains who you are you know at your core I don't know it's hard to explain especially for someone that like I for myself I struggle with talking about who I am or my background so I think it's like when you open up about your childhood um that's like that's like a uh, kind of like the root of who you are. And then you'll keep branching out until mm-hmm. you feel comfortable. That's good. I like to hear that perspective because I'm totally the opposite. And I, I feel like I need an education <clears throat> in people who are different. And, you know, my whole family is very outgoing. My husband's super outgoing. So like I, and I kind of, I think I surround myself by very gregarious people. So I really appreciate hearing that perspective and, you know, even just reading the comic has helped, well, not even, reading the comic has really, really helped me over the past year, you know, understand different personalities and, you know, the process of analyzing them and dissecting their their reactions. So I really appreciate that and, and your perspectives that you're sharing. Mm-hmm. So I think next. It was really interesting. Oh, yeah. Uh, okay. Just like going to the next scene, I thought it was really interesting too that like, Poppy offers him some sympathy and then his first gut reaction is I don't need any fucking pity or don't fucking pity me I don't need that Mm -hmm. shit and it's like oh wow who are you I mean that rhetorically yeah but I I think I think it's important that Poppy kind of pokes back at him here like what was what reaction was I supposed to have to that like you know I what I wasn't gonna laugh about that you know and I think that I think that's also kind of her way of saying like hey I still connect with this and that's why you know she follows up with her own story mm-hmm. where she talks about her own experiences of being essentially an orphan you know about her dad passing away and her mom leaving and they haven't spoken and it's you know she's trying to say like I get it yeah. I've been there I've experienced this in a different way but I get it and you know i'm sad for you because i'm sad for myself so why do you guys think that torah doesn't want to have her pity because he's strong and you don't want someone to feel sorry for you for where you are like he's already in a great spot in his life where first of all He's fucking ballin. He has money. Like, he's hot. He can get any girl he wants. Like, despite all the shit that went on in his childhood, like, don't feel sorry for me for the shit I'm telling you that has happened to me. Like, 
you know, don't be like, oh, too bad, so sad. Like, no, I don't need to see that pity party. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think he may be mistaken. And I'm not sure, oh, I'm so sorry, kind of sob thing, like you're talking about, Darlene. Like, I think she's really trying to connect with him and reach him. And he's like, I, look, I don't need your pity. I don't need your sympathy. But she's like, no, hey, hold the phone. I'm not, I'm not pitying you. I'm trying to connect with you. And so there's a little bit lost in translation between the two of them here. But I like that they kind of push through it anyway. I understand Tora not wanting to be pitied because mm -hmm. you know, everyone wants to think of themselves as as worthy, as as strong, as you know, like not a victim or whatever. But mm -hmm. right, like what is what is is Poppy supposed to do? Like clap? I mean, like <laughs> what <is> this? <laughs> yeah, yeah, I can't. <laughs> I think, yeah, I think it's just the fact that he was showing vulnerability, and he's mm -hmm. not used to doing that, like emotional vulnerability. And when he got that reaction from Poppy, he was like, well, I don't, this is new territory, uncharted, don't feel, why are you feeling this way for me? I'm fine, mm -hmm. <laughs> type of thing. So I think for him, it's more just, it's new. He doesn't know how to talk um, about these, or he doesn't, he's not sure what the right or normal reaction is from his audience. Mm -hmm. And yeah, I, I love how they kind of turned it into a little banter between them. And then Poppy's face is so funny. Goodness, let's see. Where does she go? Um, I wasn't going to, and then she has like little grumpy eyes. She actually kind of looks like a pumpkin. I'm going to say it. <laughs> like a little grumpy little pumpkin. So my one, one question is, is why doesn't she know how old she was when her father passed away? I mean, 14 or 15, that was definitely old enough to know. Like, I'm just confused why she doesn't know how old she was. Mm -hmm. no. it's, it's Sometimes those things time, can be a blur. Weird. Yeah, no, time is weird, I'll be honest. Um, No, I, this is more just like me from talking about it from personal experience. Sometimes I have to kind of remind myself like the year my mom passed away and then, oh, it's been this many years. And then, mm -hmm. oh, this is when that happened. This is how old I was. To me, it was more just like the years kind of blending together. You, you it, it's, it's, it's interesting, like the memories that you hold and the memories that you don't, it's more of um, um, uh, like an emotional visceral memory that that stays solidified it's not so much the details like the factual details that you yeah mm. so I wasn't bothered by that anyway and so yeah Poppy is using that as a connection point and I think Torres is something similar too. He said something about his father leaving when he was four or five. Right. He at that case, I think he would be young enough where he wouldn't really remember anyway. Mm -hmm. No. Father dying, yeah. So Poppy's like, so I guess we're not that different after all. Pretty and then Torres like, I'm pretty sure that's where our similarities end. Don't get your hopes up. And she's like, I'm pretty sure it's not. Try me. And you know, she's again facing out towards the pier while he's leaning back. Yeah. I'm in the mafia, we already know that. And she says, well, and her back is is to us. <laughs> so am I. Whoa, Whoa. Devil. Whoa. Devil. There is please, people. Here we go. Poppy oh. turned around on purpose. Lily turned her around on purpose. Are you? Oh. And then that little spider. Yeah. We see you. We see you, Lily. Yeah. So this part, you know, because usually when when Poppy's joking, she she kind of is, you know, she has that banter with him, but she's not facing him. She says it like I can almost hear it in my mind when she says, Well, so am I. Like it's I I I read it as very resolute, very final. 
Mm -hmm. and you know like it's it's kind of her own moment of like I can't look at you when I say this yeah like she's also just kind of Mm -hmm. testing the waters too Mm -hmm. like how's he gonna react if I just kind of dangle it there and not say anything else right it's very much a cliffhanger (laughs) or a cliffhanger (laughs) whatever okay So, you know, what do you guys think of this? Do you think she knows her? Okay, it, it, what, uh, several options. She actually is in the mafia, like actively, and like she's a coordinating like hits and deals and whatever, and we just have been fooled all along. Or I think it's a little more likely that she knows that her family has mafia connections, that she comes from a mafia family. You know, we've been speculating about it for forever. Her dad, her mom go back and forth with those two. But, and maybe she, that's what she means. Or third option, she joined the mafia on her own, which would be weird. But <laughs> what are your theories? Yeah, so my theory is like, you know, she's part of La Rosa gang and like her mom's La Rosa leader. And, you know, she's just telling Poppy like, look, you, you gotta, you gotta befriend this Torah guy. So, uh, <laughs> Oh my you can get a hit on the Baltimore clan. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I am, I'm just kidding. I'm on board with that. 100%. On board. I'm just kidding. I totally bullshitted that right now. <laughs> There's so, going to be some damn tinfoil that's like, mm-hmm. oh, she's definitely part of this gang and her mom's the head of it. And oh, Jesus. And Queen's <laughs> don't her half brother. <laughs> I, I'm. I'm, I'm not, I don't, I'm, I'm on board with that. I can see that. That's okay. <laughs> with the, uh, the love triangle between them, if we were, that we were talking about earlier, like, oh any my God. Between them. I think that's what she was really doing at that sketchy garage, was meeting <laughs> her mafia <laughs> connections. Mm-hmm. Yeah. The mafia now. So here's my question. Why do we think the mom's in the mafia? Because the way I was kind of like reading the story, I was actually leading towards the dad. Yes, uh, so was I. The one that's been teaching her how to fight and also like how to make that like eye contact to get what mm-hmm. you want. Um, and it looks like her grandma was has been involved too. I guess my little tin tinfoil hat theory is that they were in the mafia but maybe they're not quite as active as they used to be, especially Mm -hmm. since her father passed away. And I guess it would kind of explain too why Poppy felt so insecure that she felt like she had to go to the first person. Again, um, Mm -hmm. uh, unhealthy attachment issues. Poppy and Tora are kind of like the opposites where Poppy just like attached herself to someone, the first person that came back, came into her life, which was jewelry. Um, So I'm wondering if maybe the fact that the mafia business, quote unquote, and her family maybe died down a little bit, kind of pushed her to go a little bit more out into the world and form this unhealthy connection with someone. That's my theory anyway. Yeah, like maybe she felt like he was so normal that Mm -hmm. like, okay, I'll be safe if if I date this normal guy. Normal. normal boring and maybe dumb so he wouldn't pick up on it oh god no kidding <laughs> and ugly yeah bless it she's just like let me stay under the radar as much as humanly possible i'm gonna date a potato farmer no no dude just- is poppy even her real name is i question poppy even her name I question I everything. No, no, I'm not going to question that. No, you're not going to make me a, a doubter. I question the last name. I don't think yes. Wilkes is her last name. I, don't I really don't. Either. Okay. Because if, if you add it up with the fact that her address wasn't where you thought it was, and Gyu's oh, freaking true. smart. Yeah. Like, Saucy, you pointed this out. Like, you've never been wrong, and he is on top of his game. So, like, no way, no how would he have gotten wrong intel unless it was purposeful that they found the wrong address and that they're actually out in the boonies (laughs) down this windy road. They're isolating themselves so no one finds them. Yes. Yes. So I, I'm, I'm with you, Vita. I definitely think 
it's on the dad's side. And I think like, this is just my perspective. I think her dad orchestrated everything and ensured everything in terms of her safety before he, before he passed away. And, and, and now like, I know this is going out on a limb, but I question how he died. I, I question it big time. Oh my God. That would be so freaking horrible. Uh, hey, I hope so I'm what wrong. If, what if Poppy's mom left because she couldn't <clears throat> handle the mob life and was just like, I am so done with this shit. Like I am risking my life, my children's life. Like, mm-hmm. and then she, she just left. Maybe, yeah. Which ask the hard question why did she leave poppy behind i mean i think it's plausible i do but then i have to ask myself does she think that maybe i know this is a stretch but like does she think that perhaps her husband had a better chance of protecting poppy than she did i don't know also if poppy is like an heir to a clan it could be that there's no way she could have taken her out from the clan right if she would have run away with her they would have could have maybe tracked her down and be like you go, you know, done some terrible things to her to keep the air, you know. Oh. But yeah, this is this is intense information. And I think she's absolutely being honest. And I think she's known for years. I don't think Granny had to tell her anything. Because what did we what did we hear a couple episodes ago? Tora's like, she's smart as hell. She figures out stuff all the time on her own. Yeah. So where did abs- go? I think she froze. So she's just got to pop back in. Um, but yeah, I think, oh man. I, but I do think Darlene's um, theory about, you know, maybe mom left because she couldn't hack it with the, the mob life, which really who could. Um, and that makes a lot of sense. So yeah, it does. Oh, intense stuff. So of course, we have to break it up, you know. Um, Our answer is now. <laughs> right? Like, he doesn't, at first he's, like, shocked. He's like, oh, oh, shit. Um, and then he's like, nah, you're pulling my leg. And he's like, real funny. And she doesn't respond. She doesn't react. Right. She doesn't bite. Uh-huh. Look at mm-hmm. that, it, those are, that's a sign. Yeah, she was mm-hmm. telling the truth. Oh my God, by the way, Poppy pulled a fast one on us or mm-hmm. Lily did. <laughs> yeah. This just shows just because you're, you know, with a character for most of the story doesn't mean you know everything about them. <laughs> right, right. And I feel like she definitely has been planting the seeds since the beginning that there's more to Poppy than we than we think. And it's like T- Taurus sees it, which is awesome. <laughs> mm-hmm. um, no, super cool though. Yay. Hey, uh, welcome back. <laughs> yeah, and now we have our darling a spider, who is, by the way, like literally purple <laughs> green. Like the colors on the spider are a little not natural. They're so <laughs> funny. <laughs> hilarious. And blue also. And he, he or she, the spider, whatever it is, scuttles up Tora's leg. He, he freaks out. He's like, oh, holy shit. And and then, of course, Poppy's like, don't fall over the railing. After which Tora proceeds to fall over the railing. <laughs> he jumps up, spider's going up. Poppy's reaching out. Ah! And, you know, the spider, like, jumps off of him. Tora's pulling <laughs> the dog, vainly trying to reach for her hand. <laughs> can, we, can, we just, can we just, like, go back to that little picture where the spider goes, Kia? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Very cute. Spider is like, I ain't falling into that pier. I just came out of the water. <laughs> oh my <laughs> god. <laughs> that damn spider. <laughs> like, <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm dying over this. <laughs> like, you have this massive man. He's like six foot three, built like a damn tank. And then you have this, you know this spider has to be huge because it's like covering his kneecap. <laughs> <laughs> just like oh my god well and it's like fucking technicolor look at that thing it's like purple <laughs> with green legs and like the fuck is that 
like a 70s groovy uh spider all dressed up for a night out <laughs> oh my god like i i questioned like as saucy and i were talking earlier i think it was yesterday and i was like is that spider for real and like like lightning she was like oh want to bet and posted oh, no. a picture of it and they're actually really cute i was like oh it's precious <laughs> not an oxymoron <laughs> oh my gosh well, see, that's what happens when you live in nature. You think spiders are cute. <laughs> Sorry. Oh. I admire. Um, yeah, I wish I could be like that. I try to be like that. I say I don't kill bugs because I, you know, I don't feel it's right to like kill something if I don't have to. But, you know, like cute. That's a little bit, a little bit much. <laughs> but they have like these cute little eyes, right? And you said that they were, they were jumping spiders, right? Yeah, they are. I mean, I don't they know. They jump. Fuck that. Yeah. And well, no wonder Tora wanted to get away. <laughs> oh my god, he just wanted to say hello. Oh, <laughs> the theme this season, though. I thought it was yeah. Cute too how like Tora is completely out of his element, but Poppy isn't, and she's like, "It's just a bug. Why are you like?" freaking out for it. yeah yeah for sure <laughs> but yeah this it's is cute. you were saying saucy that this is like the second bug significant bug yeah hey, if you had the pocket, cockroach probably just scoop it right up stick it in there right for later use exactly mm -hmm. exactly well, what if that's her pet spider tora come on now <laughs> yeah it's she's a package deal she comes along with a whole menagerie of anar kids <laughs> <laughs> so yeah oh, their God. faces are are just i could stare at these two panels that poppy's like oh my god and like tora is like falling in <laughs> i love their panels i love their expressions yeah adorable like just so cute <laughs> oh my gosh the tora falling cute. panel is my favorite i thought it was cute too how poppy thought she could pull him back not girl. <laughs> yeah. In with him. <laughs> like we all know what that's gonna do. I love his hands. I have to say, those hands, mm -mm -mm, they're so beautiful and large and amazing. So manly. So, <laughs> what? What is it? Lily having? gets the most dynamic, kinetic. Is it? Is it his hands? Action scene. Yeah. Yeah. Wait, hang on. Go ahead, Saucy. I was just saying, it's fun that Lily gets the most dynamic and kinetic action scenes in the middle of what's a fairly quiet episode yet mm -hmm. you know the way it's drawn it's it's got as much action in it as a fight or a car chase i mean it's it's visually satisfying in that way mm -hmm. for you sure got the fist right the fist scene where poppy's grabbing it right oh <laughs> yeah yeah, where she's trying to make make a feeble attempt to be like, wait, no, don't fall. <laughs> oh, oh, okay. <laughs> and then it makes this made me laugh the most is that you've got this enormous splash from these two people tumbling into this quiet lake, and then boom, instant quiet. Like the lake <laughs> just ate both of them, and then now we're done. You know, it's horror movie kind of thing, but <laughs> it's just totally placid, and then poof, he pops out like a humpback whale breaching just like a humpback <laughs> whale wait, wait, a sexy humpback whale what the fuck he's, are you talking about humpback whales sexy. are sexy he's yeah. coming out of there like you need a sperm whale he doesn't have hands oh. like where's the water he's like whoosh I mean come <laughs> on you mean god thing is so I know you said like when they're falling in I was obsessed with these two panels when they're both popping out. And it's like, we're all like, we all want Tora, but we know that we're all Poppy. Yeah. <laughs> right. I, think, I, I think Eileen said like the best comment on here. I forgot what she said. I can't, I can't say it like verbatim, but she was saying like, you know, Tora was like looking all supermodel coming out of the water. <laughs> And then fucking poppies, like creature, the black lagoon or something. <laughs> you know, I I wasn't gonna do poppy like that, so I didn't describe her like that. But oh, I swear to God, her comment was like the best. <laughs> Even the sound effects. I mean, look at him. He's like, 
gah, you know, <laughs> popping out. Whereas she's Sexy. like this scream, like, up oh and God. <laughs> <laughs> It's, it's like it's like uh expectation reality <laughs> yeah exactly oh my so, god like I doubt how his his sweat his turtleneck conveniently i don't know how but falling in backwards yeah. like probably head first somehow made his turtleneck come off we won't question it maybe he took it off in the water he didn't want to drown it was weighing him down i don't know my well, totally it was probably blue. very heavy when he got wet and he just went whoosh, See my my batshit uh, theory here is that Ulan from the Great Beyond <laughs> said, "Look, y'all are getting too fucking serious in this goddamn <laughs> conversation. Y'all need to get laid. So Ooh. we're gonna bring. I I think he was he was bringing Senor Spider to the chat, and he's like, y'all are gonna get in that damn lake, and <laughs> poof, your your I sweater is going well. to disintegrate. It's magic." <laughs> it melted off of him it did it did it's the magical lake <laughs> yes, yes. but if he was gonna melt something off he should have melted off her gray sweatpants is what he should have Dude, that, that lake is like made of acid or what <laughs> see that's why i told you it's a total crackpot theory i have no idea what i'm talking about <laughs> oh my god but it's it's the exact comic relief we needed in this moment it's just lily's like all right we've slowed down too much now we're gonna ramp it up and we're gonna get wacky y'all <laughs> <laughs> they're like oh. Victoria, where are you <laughs> over here and they're coughing right <laughs> and then they go closer and he's like he touches her face so and he's like cute. okay He's like, I'm okay. You okay? Cough, cough. Lots of cough. She's coughing. She's, she's coughing a fit. He's like, yeah. She's like, ah, oh my God. Those were you city people freaking out over a silly little old. She's like, excuse me, Poppy. Not all of us were privileged to grow up with, you know, the wildlife. Just saying. <laughs> <laughs> oh God. I love her because she's just like, even though she's like probably like coughing up half the lake from her lungs. She's like, no, I'm still going to give you shit for this because I can't. I'm helping her. Like in the panel before that, he's helping mm -hmm. her like fix her hair. And I just thought this was so cute, like a tender yeah. moment. Like, despite the word. like they're, ban they're having their bantering and he's fixing her hair and she's fixing her hair. And I just, oh, it's so cute. So kawaii. <laughs> <laughs> and I love their wet hair too. I think it's yeah. Cute. But it's also the, the fact that Poppy, this is the one area where she is in a way superior to him or more do dominant than him or strong, right? Because usually she's like, you know, people were perceive her, she's a little cute girl and he's mm -hmm. the big capable guy. But in the area of bugs, she's the one who has the power, you know, because she's we're not scared. Also, we're in her territory. Like this mm -hmm. is her home. This is the forest. Mm -hmm. the forest holy, the city boy. Like he's totally like, completely in her world right now. Mm -hmm. And I thought that was really cool too, how they've been traveling to each other's world, so to speak. Yeah. Um, I mean, the season started when they were in Airy Street and now they're in the middle of the forest. Um, <laughs> so yeah, super cool to see them changing around the sceneries. Mindy, did you guys talk, um, I don't know, in the last episode or what have you, about the parallel between this conversation and their previous one-on-ones go ahead like, like so. well no i'm just thinking of like um the obvious ones are regina's peak and behind the statue at the club mm -hmm. we, we mentioned regina's peak at some point and we definitely didn't talk about the club so i'd love to hear about that yeah well like with regina's the thing is it's not just the fact that they're under the sky right and talking and they're but and the sort of the whole color scheme right mm -hmm. but they're they're on the edge of a drop yes I, I talked and they're about on the this. edge of the drop yeah. yeah and then in this one though they both fall yeah they're both safe and warm in this warm lake that's always going to catch them <laughs> Aww. Yeah, Aww. but falling is a metaphor, obviously, for falling in love or falling like falling in love. So when was the first time he fell? 
was on his butt at the stairs in like the yes. very first episode mm-hmm. when he was thinking, thinking of her tits of her yes <laughs> tits and fell right and so here they both fall which is I thought so, kind of interesting. oh my god wait and then he was preventing her from falling with Regina's peak with the rope and then yep. the yes. fallen angels at the yep. um club and then mm-hmm. they found the lake well, the metaphor of the club perfect. was they're underwater, but they're not literally underwater, yeah. right? They're next to the fish and the water, and but they're underwater with that blue um, beam and everything yeah. else. And here, they're actually, they end up actually in the water, yeah. right? So it's kind of this progression almost of all and, their and, individual conversations, all and, blue. And you know what's nice about this is that he has fallen into her world, which is yeah the safety yeah. net which mm-hmm. is completely opposite of his city life and you know I, okay let's just say like uh, would we want poppy to fall like you know in the deep end of fucking mafia life i, no. I think that's kind of dangerous territory right so like the best route is to have Tora fall into her world which is the suburbs, the safety of family, um, and which is what he needs. He's never experienced this, and it's his. It's finally the civilian life that he's able to experience. What he really needs right now is for a fish to bite him in the ass. <laughs> oh my That's god! I, I would see. die. I would die. So I was I, in the river the other day, and I like ten fish bit me. Fuck that peg. I would fucking die. I would kill them all. You can't. They're slippery and they're fast. And they're in the water. Disgusting. I, I'm waiting for it to happen <laughs> next episode. I'm with you, Saucy, because like I was waiting for that to happen and for him to freak out even more because, you know, there's been so many times like when you were talking about the parallels, Saucy, like when she's been in his world, she's been the one to like freak out and be like, oh my God, I'm so not used to this. And now we've got the exact reversal of that. He's in her world and freaking out and he doesn't know what to do about it. He doesn't have a script for this. Oh my gosh. I love this so much. <laughs> yeah. So they're like, you know, he's freaking out. He's like, so the bug, do you see the size of that thing? He's an effing monster. And then <laughs> academic on him and she's like okay technically it's neither bug nor monster spiders are on our kids and then we hear a rrr, rrr, and probably like uh-oh. and <laughs> they're both like oh my goodness and then they hear a voice hey is that poppy scooter and they're like yeah but i thought she gave it to that boy from the potato farm which is how now we know why she'll rehab a potato <laughs> person <laughs> he's a fucking potato farmer okay and we see this couple walking along and they're like, and the girl said they broke up a few weeks back, didn't they? Yep. And Kim told everyone not to let Poppy know about her fall. Ha ha. But so it can't be Poppy, can it? I better call Poppy. Okay. So that's nice, right? They're, they see the scooter there and they're like, why is it here? So they call her, which is nice of them. You know, it's true. That I still <laughs> love the potato farming boy goes around with samples. <laughs> 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 oh, he's ready to fry up some fries. I, yes. I guess so. <laughs> Never know when you might need a cedar. Yep. <laughs> Feed those babies up. Yeah, we definitely see what Poppy's talking about with a small town. Because, like, everyone knows her business. Like, everyone. These are r- random people mm-hmm. who they are, but they're like, they all know about her life. <laughs> like, no wonder she didn't want to turn on the lights. Like, I don't want anybody to know I'm here. Jesus, I don't want to deal with them. And like mm-hmm. in small towns, like everybody knows everybody and they're going to be in your business. And, you know, I, I love like just one of the things I want to point out that I just absolutely love is that they both freak out like two teenagers that have been caught skinny dipping. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. <laughs> we laugh so hard. I mean, we've seen Tora at like what, eight? guys running at him and he's cool as a cucumber yeah i'm flying by and he's like whatever and here's like ned and freaking june or whatever <laughs> he's like has a panic attack oh my god yeah that's like perfect does not compute <laughs> <laughs> they're like oh well from the, block from the inside right which would indicate someone's in there they're calling her ring 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 and then she's like crap it's ned and june i didn't expect them to come over this late 
And he's like, who the hell are, wait, where's my shirt? I was holding on Where's to my shirt? <laughs> <laughs> like that matters at this point. You're like, y'all are both Spider wet. <laughs> well, he tells them, right, we know why he wants a shirt. He's like, wait, you want your shirt now? And he's like, to cover myself up. He's like, oh, your tattoos. And let it be noted, Poppy has just grabbed him out of nowhere and is floating on him. And <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah, quotation device. <laughs> Oh, I love that. <laughs> but yeah, like, that's what you see in the water. Like, you just huggy wuggy cuddle. Why not? Oh my God. He's so flipping out, and I love this. <laughs> ah, I can't get over it. He's like, what? She, so she says, no, never mind. Don't worry about it, Tora. I'll go over and talk to them. Like, because she's like, eh, whatever. I'll, I'll just deal with this, right? Because these are people she knows. And he's like, still flipping shit. Like, what? But you're all wet. Like, what should I do? Like, he's total <laughs> panic mode. Bless him. His eyes. You know, you know what his eyes look like? His eyes look like he has mascara and is running, right? It's like, that. yeah. <laughs> but, but it's not the most panic we've seen him. Oh my gosh. And it's, it's about this totally mundane thing. I just, I love it so much. And, and like, of course, like, I think it's kind of funny. He's like, but you're all wet. And like, my first thought was, yeah. And that's a light colored tank top and you ain't wearing a bra, honey. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yes. Stay under that water. <laughs> yeah. The, te the tethas are coming to play. Yeah. <laughs> Those uh, boobies should be floating. Should yeah. Yeah. Because mm -hmm. <laughs> fat and bloat, so her tits should be a little, you know, buoyant, like about the water coming up to say hello. Yeah, <laughs> and Patty, under. Patty, you've got fangs there. We oh, what? we do have fangs. Oh, oh shit! Mm -hmm. Who is this, Patty? You're slipping. <laughs> You're I know. Like, How did I not I'm notice not. that? Oh God, I'm I'm off my game. Damn it. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god is it is it weird to be attracted to to freak out torah <laughs> because no, no, no. yeah any kind of torah so weird <laughs> Darla. oh my god I and then this next panel shot. i know like is is he holding on to her ass do we yes. think that's what's happening here? yeah yeah, yeah obviously of course <laughs> comfortable with each other they didn't even like ask or say you know can i they just did it she grabbed onto him. He grabbed onto her. Yeah. They're scared. <laughs> scared. <laughs> they want future comforts. It's uh, freaking adorable. And it's beautiful. I like it also in terms of like visually, it's just a nice break. You know, it's nice to get different vantage points. It's mm -hmm. refreshing. I just want the shirt kind of drifting in the current in the back. Uh -huh. I know. Uh -huh. I love that. We, we're just getting little peaks right now. Like mm -hmm. just a little bit further a little bit further <laughs> well i think lily took the whole shirt off for fan service so i mean the, the oh. turtle <laughs> more <laughs> sexiness the next for everyone for poppy shit. for the 10 million fans <laughs> mm -hmm. and yeah and then she you know poppy kicks herself away she's she's close towards them she's like she's like a marine you know crawling under the water and <laughs> a turtle or something oh my god i was like it's a shark it's a poppy shark watch out because <laughs> <laughs> our little head's just sticking out of the water <laughs> yeah and she's like oh i'm over here in the lake and they're like poppy land and by the way that guy looks like the guy looks like well he looks like jewelry but anyway yeah uh, he yeah. fucking does <laughs> fuck you ned he looks like jewelry, <laughs> motherfucker oh fuck god. you <sighs> they're like god dang you gave us a scare we thought some burglar broke into your house and yeah when driving home we saw a light at the dock so that's nice like i think they came to investigate because they thought there was a burglar right which is also nice of them <clears throat> they're like it's almost midnight what are you doing on the lake did you come back to visit your granny yeah i did you and just go back from the hospital um and uh not sleepy yet uh it's been a long time since i took a dip in the lake uh, <laughs> june <laughs> ned she's trying to get laid go away <laughs> June, June got it though <laughs> she yes. did she yes. got she the does. message <laughs> right. Ned is like oh it's dangerous and no used to being out on these rural parts on your own but these days you never know and Poppy is like giving herself away she's looking backwards and June's like mm -hmm. and then if your dad were around I don't think blah 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 and your granny blah 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 it was just adorable 
and you know, June looks around, sees this shadow under the under the dock, handsome, tall, and dark shadow, and she's like, "Ooh, <laughs> <laughs> how, how, how is this feasible?" Country girls have eyes like a goddamn hawk. True. I didn't know you could have shadows underneath the water, but of course, Tara can because you know fucking sexy no matter what no matter where he's at Mm -hmm. always sexy and june's like let's hightail it out of here let's give poppy her alone time she's like it's a warm night ned i'd invite you to hop into the lake we were 20 years younger hard so cute and then she's like wow he's like we we can hop in now if you want (laughs) (laughs) i was like go get your own fucking lake dude (laughs) i think they will Carla, based on what happens (laughs) Like, don't be cheeky, honey. Let's not traumatize Poppy Land. We should leave her to her moonlight rendezvous now. Wink, wink. <laughs> <laughs> June for the win. Yes. <laughs> Adorable. Poppy is like blushing, biting her lip. Yeah, girl, you know, that June is a mature woman. She ain't embarrassed of the realities of life. So she's right. fine. Right. Don't be embarrassed, Poppy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's like a country girl code. Like, don't worry. I got you. I know where this is headed. Like, I've been there, done that. Go get you some, honey. <laughs> it's great. Great. Oh, yeah. my God. And I love how they have their own little story. Like, they're walking away, and, and the husband's like, oh, tonight was amazing, Junie, but we should do this more often. Tonight isn't over yet, though. Are you ready for a little <laughs> <laughs> Oh, man. I how there's some you know it's a nice they seem like a nice couple nice relationship romance it's good to see you know some good people there yeah and at least at least they're looking out for poppy i'll give them that sure they kind of cock blocked a little bit but it's all right it's all right june redeemed them it'll be okay (laughs) god oh man (laughs) poppy uh you know thanks for the save june and you know they drive away and she swims back over they gone yep and she's looking well i think that's a mm. nice look <laughs> oh yeah looking she's looking at the wetness gleaming in the moonlight on Tora's tattoos Oof. Looking at. yes the lake water dripping in the skin and hair mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Right, Meanwhile, yeah, he's, he's, like, he's not having any of it. Like, what the hell? <laughs> yeah, but he pulls her close. She's swimming and he just pulls her right to him. We're mm. snuggled up there. He's like, I thought my heart was going to jump out of my mouth. Can you feel it? And like, I'm sorry. I think there, I think it, him placing her hand on his heart was a little more than just like, oh, do you feel my heart? I think he was a little bit like, I want you to feel me. Oh, I definitely think so. Because if you go, if can we scroll back to that panel where they're underwater and we see him pull her, like, oh, Jesus. That stupid belt is still on. Oh, get the belt <laughs> off. Upwards. Oh, I see that pelvic beat. Get, oh, yes. Yes. Jesus. And her booty. Her booty looks fabulous. Mm. Look, look at that. It's just like, mm. Mm, and her girl. tight top has gotten smaller and smaller i know. know it's like it's like a little strip now it's not a tank top it's just like a little crop thing it, it's a magic it, it lake up. It right. up. <laughs> and shrunk. you mean acidic patty it's just melting <laughs> it off it's just melting that shit off doing the same shit what happened to joker doing that to torn poppy Oh my god. (laughs) But then he's sitting there describing his uh, describing his panic attack essentially. He's like, I thought my heart was gonna jump out of my mouth. Like, can you feel that? And she's like, strong and hard. Um, your heartbeat, I mean. (laughs) One second. Uh, she is pressed against him. If there's anything going on, she can feel it. She can feel it even if there's nothing going on. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Well, and isn't this reminiscent of a certain bathtub scene we've seen <laughs> in another comic. Yeah. 
I can feel your ignore it. (laughs) (laughs) That's, that's what, and, and like the part that like really struck me in the heart here was when he says, can you feel it? Like the way he pulled her hand in, it reminded me of that moment when Ulan and Yua were sitting outside of the tub. And he says, do you remember when you said that you could put something through here if you wanted to? I think this is Tora's moment here without saying it yeah oh which y'all know i love those parallels it's just like oh god could this be it i think we have all the elements in place y'all oh okay i'll shut up (laughs) but yeah this is like he is experiencing some real anxiety and he says he actually Mm -hmm. uses that word anxious he's like what the hell i haven't felt this anxious since i jacked my first car She's like, relax, you know, I'm about to get a heart attack. Not on my watch. Take deep breaths. Imagine you're training at the gym. And, and then he's like, I feel like a stool pigeon, which is <laughs> you know, to like her not knowing the right mafia word. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and yeah, so she goes right back. She's like, oh, tough luck. That's your first civilian, uh, you know, lesson. <laughs> and um, yeah, but I'm very surprised that he was that anxious. But yeah, this is a whole new world for him. Like. Yeah. He doesn't has he doesn't know what to do oh gosh yeah welcome to the world of heart palpitations and anxiety attacks which i think is something that poppy is experienced with you know so that's why she's she's saying, saying mm-hmm. no. yeah i want to refund this shit stinks <laughs> me too tora me too Oh, oh and then we have if only it were that simple and that look on his face mm. i just knew what was coming didn't have to say it mm. beautiful intense <sighs> look and we get this look also from under it's like kind of from the camera camera is underneath the dock like you see the little bit of wood on top very yeah. cool mm. and we lean in for the kiss mm. Mm. yes mm. good night oh great episode <laughs> Great ending. Oh, oh man. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, we're all just like with our satisfied size. That's it. <laughs> that's oh, our commentary. <laughs> that, that's that's the analysis. We're all wiped. Yeah. She gave us two kisses in one episode. She did. Oh. She did. And She's very like, sexy ones almost. too. Oh. Like, oh, sexy kiss. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like there they're wet like you were saying saucy like they they have dove head first in they didn't just dip their toes in they have fallen and they are wet now (laughs) exactly Mm -hmm. you're getting wetter yes (laughs) who's wet oh yes yes oh god I like how in that last shot, her hair breaks the frame and both of their hair is on the same. There's a little variation, but it's mainly the same um, mm-hmm. curve. It is. They're they mimic the each other. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, do you guys want to do a bonus question? Sure. Yeah. Sure. Okay. 